Okie dokie, so welcome to this series of videos where I will be going through the dot points for the new HSC physics syllabus. Uh, in this video, we will be looking at the first dot point of the first module. So module is advanced mechanics. Uh, topic is projectile motion and we'll be analyzing the motion of projectiles by resolving the motion into horizontal and vertical components, making the following assumptions that a constant vertical acceleration due to gravity is present and that we have zero air resistance. So what does this all mean? Let's look at that first point. So analyze the motion of projectiles. So let's concentrate on the motion of projectiles initially. Okay, so what is a projectile? A projectile is effectively anything that can be thrown into the air on Earth, right? So if you throw something in the air on Earth, it will eventually come back down, right? And what we're interested in is how does that motion look like? So what are some examples? Example, a ball, a uh, bullet, a rocket. These are all a cannonball. These are all examples of a projectile. So how does a projectile move? So let's assume that we have this ball right here and we are going to throw it into the air. What is going to happen? if we throw the ball into the air. It's gonna go up, right? It's gonna go up even higher. But the important point here is that it's starting to slow down, right? It slows down, comes back down, and eventually it hits the ground again. Yeah, it goes up, 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 up. It slows down, it comes back down, 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 down. That's the sort of intuitive idea we have. So what does the, what does the velocity do? while a projector moves. Let's check that out. So it moves in a parabola. What does the velocity do while a projectile moves? Initially, the velocity is quite high. So what we're saying is that we've shot the ball up and it has a initial velocity. We're gonna call this V, okay? So that's our velocity, right? Maybe we can call it U, but we'll just call it V. As it moves along, you can see that it changes. The velocity vector is changed by the force of gravity. Because we're going and then it hits the ground. Yes. So gravity changes the magnitude and direction of the velocity. Yes. Now, here's the most important point, right? So we've looked at the motion of projectile. We've looked at how the velocity changes but the question is asking us to resolve it by resolving the motion into horizontal and vertical components. So basically, because we're saying that the acceleration due to gravity is also in the vertical direction, right? We now know which direction that is. It's in the up-down direction. So the only other point is that we have a horizontal direction as well. If we take this velocity initially and we split it up into components, we have a component that goes Vx, let's call that Vx. In other words, V horizontal, and then Vy, which will be our vertical. So we're just gonna say Y is our vertical direction and X is horizontal, okay? If we do this for all of the components, we can see one very important point. And that important point is that the velocity only changes in the y direction, the magnitude, the horizontal direction, or x remains constant, i.e. vx equals a constant. Okay, now, why does this occur? This only occurs because we have zero air resistance. If there was air resistance, that would introduce a force in the x direction. So the point here is that gravity is the only force, okay? So let's imagine that this is every second we take a snapshot and this is velocity is per second. What we're saying is that per second, so this is coming down, this is from that one. So per unit of time, it covers the same horizontal distance. The ball covers the same horizontal distance per unit of time. Um, so we've basically gone through and explained the 
motion of projectiles and we've said we can uh, decompose it into different components so let's look at an example what we're going to say is we have a cannonball and it is going to be launched at some velocity and maybe we can say i'm going to call this u for our initial velocity okay resolving motion into x and y components say that this is equal to 10 meters per second okay so we're saying it's 60 degrees from the horizontal what is the horizontal and vertical component of the velocity u so let's compose this okay so we're saying it's 60 degrees from the horizontal we know that in the horizontal direction we have u x in the vertical direction we have u y what we can do is draw this up as a triangle okay so where this is 60 degrees we're saying that this is our u this is our u y and this is our u x so what are we going to be able to do we're going to be able to say okay this is just a simple um, trigonometry problem effectively sine 60 degrees is going to equal to the opposite so u divided by u which gives us u y being equal to u sine 60 okay so it's going to equal to 8.66 meters per second because this is equal to 10 and this is equal to root 3 divided by 2. We know that cos 60 degrees is equal to ux divided by u. Therefore, ux cos 60 degrees is equal to 5 meters per second. Okie dokie. That's effectively it. So, um, thank you for watching. If you have any tips or you have any questions on this video, please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thank you very much.